morning everybody welcome to mortal gaming this is me again marvin and we're now here for another video for ragnarok origin and this time we're going to be talking about the 2024 f2p guide that i've made for beginners especially right now we have newer servers the first year anniversary server and we have a new region the latin north america region so this is gonna be very useful and very helpful since all of this are now updated up to my knowledge playing this game for one year already okay number one even as a beginner as you start your progress in the game you have to now choose which third job you would take because as an f2p you have different resources compared with the spenders so you have to save it up planning your path and planning your progress along the way will definitely help you save all of those resources okay as an overview of the third jobs let's start with the rune knights the rune knights come from the swordsman class so from a swordsman you have to become a knight and then from a knight a lord knight and then rune knight okay they are very great on pve they specialize on crit damage and melee damage they have great burst dps so on the their role on pvp they can deal ranged burst damage and also melee burst damage but right now they are kind of overshadowed with the release of the doram having a great ranged melee damage okay so next would be a royal guard so the royal guard is also from the swordsman class from the swordsman class you have to become a crusader then a paladin and then last the royal guard they are the tank role in pvp and uh, they have good utility in terms of giving out uh, buffs for damage reductions to their party members. Next would be the Guillotine Cross. The Guillotine Cross is from the Thief class. So from the Thief, you become an Assassin, then an Assassin Cross, and then last, the Guillotine Cross. They are great on PvE. They deal huge amount of damage except for Shadows and Undead monsters since shadows and undead monsters cannot be poisoned okay in terms of pvp they have the disruptor role next would be the warlocks okay so the warlocks are also very good on pve they are also a burst dps damage dealer on both on pvp and pve the downside of a warlock is that it's very squishy and kind of gets itself immobile whenever it does its burst damage or very slow in terms of movement speed okay next would be the archbishop if you want to become an archbishop you have to start as an acolyte then a priest then a high priest and then turn into an archbishop so the archbishop has no downside it is the number one necessity everywhere in this game you need an archbishop everywhere so if you are that type of person who doesn't want to get left behind and wants to get needed every time, you should become an Archbishop. So Archbishop's goal is to become as tanky as ever and has the highest heal. Next would be Shura. So the Shura is also coming from the Acolyte class, but from an Acolyte class, you have to become a Monk and then a Champion and then the shura so the shura in this game deals okay damage it's somewhat comparable to the burst damage of other classes but as we have already experienced in other ragnarok online games the shura should be dealing the highest burst damage but it is not the case in this game they have put a cap on the the shura's damage it has been buffed recently so it deals now okay and comparable damage. It has a niche role though, and it's kind of tricky to use since you need to get damage or need to lower your health or HP in order to deal more damage to the enemy, which gives you an opening. So next would be the Ranger. So the Ranger comes from the Archer class. So from the Archer, you become a Hunter, and then from a Hunter, you become a sniper and then the ranger so as compared with the transcendence family jobs 
the sniper has been very good before upon the coming of the third jobs the ranger has been the least wanted class so it still deals okay damage the fact that the developers nerfed the damage of the warg making it forced neutral has really taken down the dps of a ranger it is still one of the best classes for grinding but it's kind of hard to use on pvp so next would be the mechanic from a merchant you become blacksmith and then a whitesmith or master smith as with what we call here on this game and then a mechanic so they deal a very great deal of damage on pve and a consistent damage on pve and also on mvp they are very great throughout the game from early game mid game and to the end game they're the best one that i could offer you in terms of pve they deal de consistent damage they're great on grinding they deal burst dps damage also on pvp and with the recent sigil that they have released for the mechanics i think the mechanics are now doing better on pvp the last one would be the Doram class, okay? The Grand Summoner. That's the Grand Summoner is the the Grand Summoner is the third job of the Doram class. So for me, it is the most versatile job on all of the classes. It can be a support type, an, a debuffer type, or a DPS type. At which it is very good at all of those. All right. So number two join an active guild i've said this on my first ever f2p guide and i'm still saying it until now join an active guild an active guild will really help you a long way it will get you very far on your progress particularly the auction dividends the auction dividends come from the spenders of the guild so if you have spenders on your guild then that would be a bonus so it has good guild league rewards they work with each other helping each other on weekly runs so that's one of the benefits of having an active guild so always join an active guild next is the gears okay so for the gears i would say that don't you don't have to focus that much on modifiers because they will be replaced with divine armaments all right next get fixed parties what do i mean by fixed parties you would only work with fixed parties for example four different players that you know on real life or you would have yet to know on real life so make a party wherein you would do everything throughout your weeklies throughout your mvp and even on pvp in my opinion that is a great way for you to compare with each other's progress and help one another increase their efficacy in team battles so that's really really great i know it can be tasky at times in terms of communication and setting of schedule but i would in if i if you would be giving me that option i would still choose to have a fixed party than playing the game on solo mode okay next let's talk about snapping snapping happens every 1 p.m 5 p.m and 9 p.m 9 in the evening every day so that is gmt plus 8 i'm not sure where uh, you're watching this video from but kindly uh, translate it depending on the time zone you have so that's 1 p.m 5 p.m and 9 p.m gmt plus 8 okay so snapping is in terms of the cards okay snapping cards it is going here through the store going through the cards and all of this gets refreshed every 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 now and then and for whenever you go and look at some of the cards so most of them would be having zero on sale that means they are one of those most wanted cards that just that people get immediately whenever the card market refreshes on those time so what cards do you want to snap the first one is the universal card greatest general okay the greatest general card on accessory 
that is going to be one of the most universal car that I I can think of all of the all of the classes would be needing it so uh, start snapping the greatest general if you don't want to snap greatest general you can actually uh, acquire a greatest general card on your academy shop okay so look at this there you go you can gain one greatest general card every week and that is priced at 200 academy coins so you can only get academy coins if you have either a teacher or a mentor or a student okay and you do uh, weeklies together you do um, the tasks that are needed here on the quests together all right next cornutus card cornutus card is very important on the mid game it is a universal card for the armor i've worn it for quite a long time before i got the uh the purple cards on my armor so i would suggest for you to also get cornutus card or you may opt to go for the damage modifier cards for your weapon so these are the most important cards that you have to snap ASAP, okay? So I would suggest for you to snap first Strofe card, then Goblin card, and then Peko Peko Egg card. And make them 3-star, level them up to 3-star because until now, we're still using these 3 cards. And uh, even if they have already released the Aether cards on these 3 cards, since it's not you know easy to get the Aether cards of this. So aside from the Peko Peko Egg card, you can start uh, after the Peko Peko Egg card, you can start for Flora card, Scorpion card, and Orc Skeleton card for the Juperos Ruins and the Temple of Nightmare. Okay, number four, Cramped card. You need Cramped card on both uh, physical damagers and magic damagers so this would be really helpful next for your uh, for your shield Kalitzberg card and orc warrior card you won't be using Kalitzberg card and orc warrior card that much but whenever you need it it will certainly be helpful then last the face and the mouth and the back wear cards next let's go to the enchants as early as a beginner, you have to now focus on the enchants based on your future preferred third jobs. Again, if you if your desired future third job is going to be a rune knight, mechanic, shura, or a doram, I would recommend that you go for the path of second trance job, which is a master smith or lord knight, because they would be meta on that on that part wherein there's still no third job okay you should focus on the enchants melee boon and superior physical attack all right superior physical attack is located on your accessory wares melee boon on your weapon if your desired future third job would be a warlock or an archbishop then i would recommend for you to uh to be a high priest on the second transcendent job or a professor if it gets out um, and the enchant to focus would be magic boon on your weapon superior magical attack on your accessory wares physical defense and quickened cast time so quickened cast time is also on your weapon just have a separate preset for the quickened cast time okay both the warlock and archbishop would be needing quickened ct okay if your desired future third job is gonna be a guillotine cross a royal guard or a ranger the enchant to focus here would be superior crit on your weapon and again superior physical attack on your accessory wares and i would recommend a second transcendent job path to you which would be a sniper and then if they really if ever they really say paladin you can also switch to paladin but a sniper would be the go to for this third jobs okay next let's go to the feathers of course you also have to invest your feathers based on your future preferred third jobs okay so if your desired future third job would be a rune knight mechanic shura doram or even guillotine cross i would suggest for you to focus on valor 
Valor is the uh, the the strength feather. There you go. And then truth for your defense uh, Valkyrie. One or two truth feather is enough. Next would be for the orange feather. You have to focus on day feather. Space, time, since these are all going to be widely available for F2P players by the time that you know the third job gets released so you won't regret investing on this even though that you would uh, only attain tier 1 or tier 2 at the start of your game so it's still okay rather than you know uh, tearing up a lot of purple cards here and then just recuperating them it's gonna be a waste of feathers so I would still suggest the day space time sky divine and night so i would not suggest nature since nature has almost the same stats as the night feathers the only difference is the night feather doesn't have hp but this will still do the night feather and the divine feather so by the time that you get your hands of the uh, light and dark feather i would suggest for you to put uh, light and dark feathers on your defense Valkyries. Now, if your desired future third job is going to be a Warlock, you just have to change the Valor to uh, Faith. If it is a Ranger, just change the Valor to Glory. And if your desired future third job is an Archbishop, I would now suggest for you to focus on these feathers. The first one is Faith, of course, but it will be until the mid-game. But when they release the third jobs, you would now uh, not need a lot of Faith Feathers, okay? So, but you would need a lot of Justice Feather, okay? Justice Feathers, there you go. Soul Feather, where is the Soul Feather? This one, Soul Feather, and then the Mercy Feather, all right? For your attack Valkyries, I would suggest for you to input Faith and Justice Purple Feathers. And then for your uh, for your Defense Valkyries, I would suggest for you to, uh, to put Justice, Soul, and Mercy. Yes, those are three Purple Feathers. You could also go for two Purple Feathers and three Orange Feathers. It's up to you, okay? So for your orange feathers to focus on the time and day feathers, of course, you need PvE damage bonus because you cannot farm or you cannot grind without PvE damage bonus or even ignore magic defense. So you still need those. Next, level up your statue weekly. Okay, max out the blue ones. Okay, the dual uh, Valkyrie, the dual um, statue. And then level up the purple ones. There you go. And then finally, the weapon and the conqueror. After that, don't forget to level up Mist, Intimidation, and Relic evenly. Okay? You don't have to focus on one, uh, one statue since every time that you're increasing the level of the statue, it would require you a higher number of statue parts for you to level it up so leveling them evenly is still gonna be faster and giving you more stats on your character let's now go to the sigils for your sigils i would uh, recommend the sigils that you have to invest early on and th this will be the top purple sigils that you would use until the end game for PvP, it's gonna be Radiant Guardian. This is the Purple Active Sigil. It really helps a lot, okay? Particularly on large-scale PvP scenarios and on the Freya uh, Mirage right now that we have on difficult dungeons, this really helps a lot. So if you have three to four party members that has Radiant Guardian, it's gonna be very helpful next would be surging protection there you go this has both physical magic damage reduction and pvp damage reduction so it's very important in its not only in its stats but what it can do it gives you shield it gives you damage it slows the enemy next would be immortal body immortal body is not only for pvp it can also be used on pve it's a lifesaver on 
uh, a lot of occasions in my experience. And then the last would be the gate of suffering. The gate of suffering deals damage to those uh, mobile characters. And also, it gives you PvP damage reduction. So it's really helpful. On PvE, we only have to focus on two purple sigils. The first one is the Meteor. Since all, almost all of the, the late game or mid game monsters have higher HP than you. So it's very important to have to max out your meteor. Next would be the choice maze on uh, both on TSA on on and on MVP. Very important. Okay. Now in terms of the orange sigils, I would suggest for you to level up or to acquire floating protection and also endless nightmare for PvP scenarios and for PvE Starfall is the way to go and next would be Berserk but you know we are F2P so we cannot put so much value on orange sigils but then again you know you get an optional orange sigil from time to time on different events so why not you know let the people know which one to focus on their uh, orange sigils okay so let's now talk about Pets. So the end game pets that I would suggest for you to focus on as early as now would be number one, a Squidget. So the Squidget is very important on the Freya dungeon. It's also very important on, um, on MVPs, on different other dungeons, or on early game dungeons. It's very important. So Earth Lord is the next one. It's a tier S pet. So if you, if ever you're uh, you're quite confused on which one to put on your legendary wish list here, um, you know an Earth Lord would be the way to go, or an Antasha Alpha. Now the next one would be a Sohi. Until now, I'm still using the Sohi. I interchangeably use Sohi and Earth Lord from time to time whenever I need to let out uh, i need uh you know additional healing taken on mvp and also on tsa now f number four is a limited pet but everyone can get it in due time so tier 011 is still the best one to go since the shield of a 11 is useful and sometimes life-saving on uh, pvp scenarios all right so quite a long video i thank you for listening to this i'm gonna be releasing more f2p videos in the succeeding days so i do hope that you support me on that and thank you everybody for watching if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe if you happen to like this video please do leave a like share this to your friends and click that bell notification button so you get notified every time i upload a new video start a new stream or a new content that's it see you again in the next video Bye bye now I found you